All right, YouTube, how you doing? Today is Tuesday. Time for your Tuesday to play on Daily Vinyl 365 series. I am Joey, and I'm happy to continue down our sub-desert trip artist sort of uh, weekly tap. And uh, right now, I want to talk about the wonderful, the legend, the philanthropist, the brilliant, brilliant songwriter, composer, multi-instrumentalist, the 74-year-old Paul McCartney. Uh, many will know him, uh, obviously, from his Beatles fame, uh, co-songwriting with John Lennon for many years, and pretty much owning uh, almost the rights to say that all modern rock pop music has some sort of tip of the hat back to the Beatles, and that they did a lot of things, a lot of firsts. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, spawning some of the uh, other collective musical identities he's had, from Wings to his enterprising solo albums, uh, Fireman, working on scores, uh, and just building a whole network of musical alliances, all the way up to uh, modern-day performances with Kanye West. So, uh, for anyone who thought Kanye was doing him a favor, come on. Let's not do that. Uh, nevertheless, what I want to talk about is two of his more important albums, at least in my opinion, and as a solo artist, nonetheless, because we could talk for hours on his group efforts, but this is a dedication to Paul himself. So, his first solo release, uh, how coy of him to name it McCartney, uh, Obviously, this is the back, a cover taken by his then-wife, the lovely Linda, if it were, who actually took all of the photos on his subsequent 27 album releases uh, and uh, does some guest vocaling. Uh, this album, sort of an inward and outward reflection of the times, and I would say a little bit of the angst that he was dealing with uh, as the Beatles were coming to an end. And I know that there was some heartbreak between him and the members of the Beatles in the release time of this album and their the like. But this album came out in 1970, right around the time the announcement of this album came out, the announcement of the breaking of the Beatles uh, had to follow suit. Uh, some great pictures of Paul here. Uh, really just candid. I mean, from him picking his nose to going swimming at the beach, the beard, just wonderful stuff. A really uh, nice inward look at his life. Great uh, stand-in father uh, automatically right off the bat. And, you know, released on Apple nonetheless, this is a, a fantastic record. Uh, Paul would be 28 at the time of its release, younger than myself now, and what great uh, history already coming out of it, considering uh, the life of music he's built to this moment, and sort of, I would say, not wanting to fall victim of the, you know, I was in a band and the band broke up and now I was with my identity. He was pushed by his wife and I would say some of his own internal values to continue music. And this is his first attempt at that. Playing 99% of all that is on here and dealing with, uh, you know, that it's sort of a shine back to his uh, abilities, you know, because there's a lot of things in the Beatles that, you know, we know him as the bassist of the band, but he would contribute piano parts and guitar parts and even play drums on a number of the more popular Beatles songs, including back in the USSR. Uh, but you can hear it on this album, him playing a lot of the uh, various instruments. And I think that that's really cool because this album, while being a moderately identifiable as pop record, uh, includes a lot of everything. Uh, you've got some rock and blues guitar on the Valentine Day track. Uh, the instrumental Mama Miss America is sort of a psyche number with some disco bass in there. And yes, this album is a little underproduced. It's sort of a throwback to Roots, but I think Paul was all about that at the time with Get Back. He really wanted the Beatles to do it, and if they weren't going to do it, he damn well was going to. And I think that that is okay. I sort of like it for that, you know? You talk about overproduction or sort of studio technique. The Beatles never really toured on any of their later work, uh, and I assume that's because they probably couldn't do it live the same way they did in studio. And, uh, you know, 
whatever argument people have about that, I think this was Paul saying, you know what, I'm just going to make music that I can play, and I want to do it, and it's going to be simple, and let's just get it out there. Let's not overthink it anymore. And I think that that comes through. Uh, he really just puts his heart into it. And I think uh, the song Junk is probably the one that's most familiar to uh, anybody who's looking for that Beatles-type sound of Paul in there. But, uh, you know, Man We Was Lonely, last recorded track on there, is a little bit up-tempo for a song that sort of deals with negative terms. But obviously the most popularized song of the album is Maybe I'm Amazed, which... Um, I have to admit, it, it's just so well written. Uh, lyrically, vocally, uh, I, I would say, sort of showing Paul's uh, abilities as a songwriter, so heightened on that one. And uh, he had a little demonstration of his uh, love affair with Little Richard in the vocals, stretching from those nice vibratos to those almost high-pitched, ah! you know, little moments. And, and I love it. And I love that he takes his influences and he rearranges them and he... he becomes a true uh, original. And just for what it's worth, as his first release, as his first non-Beatles release, I still think that it's a powerful record, and it's one that I still enjoy spinning. So if you've never listened to McCartney, from McCartney, uh, give it a go. It's, uh, you know, 46 years now. I'm sure uh, come 2020 he'll probably have a special edition for us. 50 year anniversary, something like that. Maybe even a tour. But nonetheless, let's move ahead uh, to another album that I want to talk about. This is Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. I really love this photo on here. Uh, it is of him as a boy, apparently taken by his brother. Uh, and he's sitting in the backyard playing acoustic guitar. Uh, through these windows, uh, and he, he looks like he might be 15 or 16 here in the picture, but what a great uh, ode to sort of his lifetime. And, and this album um, came out in 2005, Paul was 63, uh, but yet this, uh, albeit is 13th significantly released under just the moniker Paul McCartney, so many more uh, works in there. This is one that I think goes back as close as you could to about this mental capacity of Paul, really looking back in on himself. And, and you see the, the musical production up here. And why not? It's Nigel Godrich, a little bit of a Radiohead style uh, production, you know, that's what he's known for, going into this record. But his lyrically coming back in and, and sort of writing uh, songs from a reflective state of mind. And I think applicably so, at that point in your life, when you're 63 and you've devoted your entire self to, to music over and over and over again and, and building songs and sharing yourself with the world, it, it, where can you go to be able to turn inward and come back to yourself and still come up with something fresh is a huge totem for him. And, and I think it's something to be said that he didn't do the production himself. He had invited Nigel in on this one. And you could sort of hear some of the tonal qualities in there, but I think it was smart, especially around that time, 2005. I don't know if there was a bigger alternative band than Radiohead. Uh, bands like Coldplay or Keen and all of that sort of British sound coming out. And I think it, it played well into the market, but it also makes the album... Uh, you know, a little bit more uh, modern, while he sort of does a reflection of all of the sounds you would have come to know throughout his career in this record. Uh, definitely moments that have that Beatles sound, that Wings sound, uh, just the Paul McCartney sound, if you will, which he owns because that's him. And like this album, he does play a whole crap load of the instruments on there, uh, even in a couple of songs playing all of the instruments, which I think is brilliantly said. And it was his last record at EMI before a short stint where he did some cross-promotional stuff with uh, Starbucks and then going back to Capitol, which I think Capitol is the appropriate place for someone like Paul McCartney. Um, but it's uh, got a lot of heart. You know, it's an album that, to me, because uh, he has had a few releases since, this one is summation of everything up to that point. And if you're looking for a really pivotal point from here to where he's gone in music since, I think that this is the last uh, big statement. I really like this album. It's one I've listened to a, a number of times, and it's not just my own biases with, with Nigel or whatever have you, but it's just one that I think warrants, uh, you know, really getting into.
really, really sinking your teeth into. So for that reason, it's an intimate record. It's got a lot of heart. It's it's very uh, honest, and it's from a good place from him. Uh, one of my favorite songs, of course, is uh, Riding to Vanity Fair. It's probably the slowest song on here. It's definitely the longest one, I think, of either of these albums. No more than two of the songs are over four minutes, probably. But that track is like five, and it's it's got a very earthy, uh, breathy kind of quality to it, it, it very uh, it, ding, 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 everything in its right place, sort of Radiohead-esque sound to it, but it, it's it's slow and it's still, uh, it's still Paul. And, and no matter what can be said about anything that he's ever done, whatever sound he's played with, uh, jazz or pop or rock or uh, blues or psych or disco or whatever, whatever he's dabbling in, He's he's spearheading the moment. He's saying, "Here I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna take over the reins. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this." And gosh, I mean, what can he do? I mean, he's just a musical mastermind. And, and for that, uh, I thank you, Paul McCartney. I am so excited to see him in a couple of weeks. It will be my first time. I feel um, emotionally bound to this show. I might have a moment uh, on the polo fields, just sort of break out in tears. I, I feel so fortunate that I'm uh, alive and he is still uh, playing and I have a chance to see a Beatle. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to leave it there. If you have thoughts on these albums, please leave me comments below. i love to hear what you think. Uh, or on Paul in general. Are you going to be at Desert Trip? Hit me up. Uh, definitely subscribe and like. Give me all your love. If you're on Instagram, I'm at Daily underscore vinyl and on social media, Facebook stuff, backslash Daily Vinyl Online. Until tomorrow, uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Take care.